most cybersecurity jobs are super easy. And I'm being completely serious about this. It's to the point that I firmly believe that almost anyone can do it. And I say this as someone who has worked in this field for over a decade in multiple Fortune 500 companies and the US government. Now, this is something that the gatekeepers really don't want you to know. In fact, if you check the comments on this video, I'm sure I already triggered a lot of them. But Ryan, if cybersecurity jobs are so easy, then why is it so difficult to get in the field? And that is exactly what I'm going to address in this video. Now, first of all, a quick disclaimer. I am not trying to trivialize the hardships that you're experiencing right now trying to get into this field in the current job market. This is absolutely the hardest part. And now a lot of that is due to the oversaturation that we're seeing at the entry level. It's because everyone that is trying to get the job is doing the same stuff. Their resumes look identical. They have the same certifications. They're all doing all this intense training on like hack the box and all this stuff. And that is why it's so hard to break in to get your initial opportunity. It's why you're met with this situation where everyone has all this training, all these accolades, but no actual experience. They're all fighting over these entry level jobs, their entry point in. But what I am saying in this video, absolutely, is that once you get past that and you land your first job in this field, what you're going to be tasked with doing on that job is actually going to be super easy. Now, this is something that you're probably hearing this. You don't believe it, right? So I'm going to pull up on screen right now what one of my clients had to say that I had helped get into the field recently as his first job as a pen tester. And by the way, he got that job straight out of college, didn't have to go into help desk first or IT first as I had to when I didn't have a mentor. He went straight into pen testing and this is what he's saying. Now, his company recently had a breach. This is a major US company. I don't want to dox it or give it away, but they had a security breach that came up just the other day. And when he found out the reason for the breach, as you see on the screen, this is what he had to say. He's really shocked about just the level of competency that you see in the field. And I've had the exact same experience in talking to a lot of my friends, colleagues and stuff in the field. They've shared with me many stories like this as well. It's far from an anomaly. Now you might be hearing this and find it really hard to believe. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull up a screenshot here of one of my private chats. I, I blurred out the guy just for his own uh, privacy, but he was a, a client of mine that I had helped get a job in data loss prevention and cloud security analyst. And uh, he was expressing here just how surprised he was of, of how easy the job is relative to what he was expecting going in. And this is far from an anomaly. This is a very common thing. You know, I even, I even say here in the chat, if you see the, the green text, that's me. I was like, yeah, I'm trying to tell people this, but no one seems to believe me. And uh, yeah, I've heard uh, multiple people not only in my community, but even, you know, friends that I've had in the field and coworkers and stuff. We've, we sat around and we expressed just like how misleading it is that everyone thinks that the job is going to be so difficult. It's going to be such an elite thing. And then they get in the job and they're like, wow, yeah, this is actually not that technical. And actually he expresses here that he felt that his help desk job was, was more difficult. And in some ways there, there is truth to that because what I found is that as I've got higher level jobs, that the working conditions increase. I found that one of the most cumbersome jobs I've ever had was my first job in IT. I had to be on call sometimes, you know, when, you know, things were breaking all the time. Someone would, you know, delete a bunch of critical company data because I did backup and recovery and they'd be panicking. They'd be freaking out. They'd be like DMing me and like, you know, in the office, they'd be like showing up at my desk. Like, can you please fix this? Can you please fix this? And you would either be their greatest hero or their, you know, their sworn enemy if you couldn't restore the data for whatever reason. And so that was really cumbersome. That was a lot harder than my first pen testing job, most certainly, I would say, in, in many regards. So that is a common sentiment. So I wouldn't glaze over this comment either. There is a lot of truth to that. Now, by far, one of the most crucial things that you need to understand is that most of what you see online is not at all an accurate representation of what a real cybersecurity job is actually like. What I mean by that is when you go online and you see all this elite hacking and all these people that are super smart, super skilled, you're actually only looking at, let's say, the top 5% of this field of this industry, because there's a lot, a lot of people in cybersecurity. We're going to look at some data around this here in a second. And even though I, you know, another disclaimer here that even though these hard cybersecurity jobs definitely do exist out there, we have to understand this is more so in the senior level roles. And overall, it is a very small percentage as you know, the person I'm making this video for is the people that are trying to get into the field, people that, you know, like you that are in the trenches right now, trying to land their first job in cybersecurity. Let me just tell you right now, spoiler alert, the first job that you 
you land is not going to be anything like this. It's not going to be like the super elite hacking. Those jobs totally exist. And uh, I'll kind of share with you my progression and how, you know, my situation changed and my job situation has changed as I became more senior in the field. But as your first job, it will be nothing like uh, your most senior job will eventually be. And another thing is the vast majority of cybersecurity professionals, they don't do these niche hacking platforms that you're obsessed with and they're still getting jobs, things like hack the box and stuff. They're not actually doing that. Meanwhile, you're grinding it out. You're grinding it out. You're doing box after box on hack the box. You have like a, a list of like five certifications that you're going to pursue and you're going to, you know, basically spend like multiple years if, if you have to just grinding out cert after cert because then you'll be ready. Then you will be an elite hacker and there's no way you can possibly fail to land a job, right? Well, let me just tell you, spoiler alert, most people in the field never touch hack the box. And before you get all mad at me and say, you don't know what you're talking about, blah, 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 blah. You have to understand you are in an echo chamber, okay? What do I mean by that? You are in the trenches. Like I said, you are doing everything in your power and why wouldn't you? You really want to get this job in cybersecurity. So you're immersed in this space. You're immersed in these communities. You're in all these discord channels. You are watching YouTube videos about certs, about upskilling yourself. You are, you know, you're really passionate about what you're doing. Most people in this field, and you'll see this when you, when you land your first job, most people in this field are not passionate about cybersecurity. Yes, passionate people exist, but they are not the majority. And so if you think about everyone in cybersecurity, and I'm going to pull up some data on the screen right now, this data I found through doing searches on Google, as well as asking some LLMs and stuff. And yes, there's caveats. This data is probably not 100% accurate. It's definitely not 100% accurate. This is a tough metric to track, but just off the cuff, the estimates of, you know, what some of these results are, they could be surprising to a lot of you guys. For me, I would say it's not too surprising because if you really stop and think about all the people in cybersecurity, remember, cybersecurity is very broad. It's extremely, extremely broad. There's a lot of things you can do in cybersecurity. There's a lot of people in the field. And the reality is that most people are not even doing a lot of the platforms that you're doing. They're not doing Hack the Box. If this data is to be believed, then only approximately one to 5% of all cybersecurity professionals globally have meaningfully used Hack the Box ever <laughs> before. And, you know, if we look at who's using it regularly, right? I mean, if we just look at some of the breakdowns, if this can be believed, then, you know, maybe only 40 to 60% of red teamers and pen testers have experience with Hack the Box. Obviously, that's going to be the largest demographic, but even that is about only half. And, you know, the SOC analysts, 5 to 15%, because now we're getting a little bit um, where it's a little bit less directly relevant to what they're doing. And GRC, where it's a lot less directly relevant, we see less than 1%. I totally believe that. But here's the thing, right? The amount of people switching careers and students trying to get in, that is one of the highest percentages, right? And so that's going to be the highest sheer number, right? Because even though red teamers and pen testers by percentage is about the same as career switchers and students, there's a lot more career switchers and students than there are pen testers and red teamers. So what that means is overall, this is going to be a lot more people. And I think this is why you're experiencing the it, part of the reason why you're experiencing this uh, difficulty of standing out when you're doing these platforms. I spoke on this before, but this is not going to help you stand out as much. And here's the thing, how necessary is it really if that small of a percentage, one to 5% overall, if this can be believed? Well, again, this could be off. These estimates could be off, but I mean, how off do you really think it is? is one to 5%. Okay. Maybe it's 10%. That's still a very, very small number. Right. And so my point with all of this is that you really don't have to be like this super smart, super elite person in order to get into the field. You just need to have the right things on your resume. You don't have to be the super elite hacker or super smart person in order to get into this field. You just need to know the right things and have the right connections maybe in some cases. So that kind of leads me into the next portion, which is answering, well, how then are people actually getting into the field of cybersecurity if um, a lot of them have never done hack the box before and you were made to believe that this was the way is cert, 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 hack the box, cert, cert, cert. Well, there's many paths into cybersecurity actually. And the thing is, not all these paths are easily repeatable, nor are they created equal. So for example, a lot of people, the way they got in was just knowing the right people, just networking, you know, maybe they happened to have a friend that, uh, you know, their uncle or something worked at a company in cybersecurity, want to give them a chance, want to give them an opportunity, right? And, and, you know, here's another thing as well. Maybe they were, you know, able to leverage things like DEI or maybe even their gender in order to get an advantage and someone else, you know, maybe someone was attracted to them, right? I, you know, I, I knew a quick story here is I remember I was trying so hard to get into the red team uh, at my first job. 
And uh, I was networking with the people there and stuff like that. And I was a lot more skilled than the girl that was also on my team, uh, on my pen testing team that uh, also wanted to get into red teaming. She, she was a lot more new, a lot more green, but because the red team lead found her attractive, this guy that was like in his forties and, and she was like uh, a young girl in her twenties. Well, guess what? <laughs> guess who got the opportunity? <laughs> Not me. She got the opportunity, right? And I'm not saying, sitting here to say, oh, I'm a victim. This is such an injustice. Is what I'm saying is, hey, there's a lot of ways that people that are less qualified than you from a technical standpoint are getting these jobs and you're not. Uh, and so everything factors in at the end of the day, but getting in is the hardest part. Uh, but once you get into this field, you will absolutely be shocked <laughs> when you find that, oh, I'm actually one of the most knowledgeable and competent people on my team. Let me just show you a message from one of my internal chats with the, the students that I'm working with uh, that, you know, this is one of the students that I helped get a job in the field. And, um, you know, this is what he, what he discovered a, as well with uh, the competency level uh, at the, uh, at the job that, that he's working at as a, as a pen tester as well. And uh, yeah, you, you, like I said, you might be quite surprised. So the next thing you may be wondering is, well, how am I so sure about all this? Well, for one thing, let me just say you are out on the internet looking for answers for this stuff, right? You landed on this video for a reason. Reason. And most people aren't like straight up. They, they simply don't care enough. <laughs> once, once you enter the field, you'll see they simply don't care enough. They're complacent. They aren't even doing hack the box. Remember? So now what should you expect in your first job as a pen tester? Uh, and what should you expect in your first job as a SOC analyst as well? I'll cover that too, because at this point I've helped dozens and dozens of people get jobs as SOC analysts as well. So I feel that I can speak on this pretty accurately. Well, in the case of a pen tester, really what you're going to expect in your first job, it's nothing like a lot of the stuff you're doing on hack the box where you're doing like like internals or like where you're faced with a hundred, you know, IP addresses or any of the intense stuff in OSCP or something like that. Instead, it's going to probably be, and in, in was the case for me and was the case for many of my clients that I help land pen testing jobs for is that you're simply going to be do, doing a combination of a few things. You're going to be doing DAST and SAS. So you're going to do dynamic scans. So you're going to run a scanner on a website or something like that. And it's going to come back with a bunch of vulnerabilities. You're going to look into them and see, are they false positives? Meaning it said the vulnerability was there, but it's not really a security issue or is it uh, is it legitimate, right? So you're just going to be double checking a scanner, basically running against a dynamic web app uh, or you're going to be doing SAST, which is static code assessment. So it's going to do a scan of the source code. And once again, same thing, it's going to come back with a bunch of potential security issues. And then you have to look at the code and say, okay, is this legit or not? And usually it's, you know, if that sounds crazy to you, usually it's pretty apparent to tell. And you're probably also going to be doing a lot of um, vulnerability vulnerability management assisting that. So if there's some um, scans of, you know, operating systems and stuff like that, they'll have like an agent running on a Linux box or something. It'll scan it and say, here are the vulnerabilities. This is unpatched. That's unpatched. And usually it's just looking at the version of different stuff and saying, hey, there's a security issue here. And you just have to confirm that manually. Uh, and when I say confirm, you might be thinking, well, you have to be an elite hacker to be able to confirm this, right? No, actually the tool will tell you exactly what data it sent, like what the attack was like in the the case of a web app, it'll say, hey, we sent this HTTP request. So you can then just go and copy and paste that into Burp Suite or something and send that request and then see what the response is. Is it actually cross-site scripting? Is it, you know, a false positive, something like that? It'll be pretty apparent. Do you pop the alert box on the screen or do you not? So a lot of times you're just running scans, you're pressing buttons essentially, and then you're validating that. And occasionally you'll probably do like the occasional manual pen test. On my team, that's what I got to do a little bit of and a lot of my clients as well that I help get jobs, that was like maybe, let's say 10% of what they're doing, five to 10% of their total time each week, what they're doing. Uh, but a lot of it was very, very simple work. Definitely nothing to be too overwhelmed about. And now as a SOC analyst, a lot of times you're gonna be starting as a, you know, a level one SOC analyst. So you're not gonna be doing any cool, like super elite, cool, nerdy uh, malware analysis or like threat hunting or a lot of the more interesting things that you see out there on the defensive side. You're just gonna be triaging alerts and deciding when to escalate it. And a lot of times it's going to be false positives. It's going to be benign stuff, but you want to have the alert still just in case it's a legitimate issue. But a lot of times it's just going to be like, okay, the software developer tried to download this package that they needed for their software and then it flagged this thing or whatever, or like some routine admin, you know, behavior that uh, is completely benign, not uh, malicious or anything. Most of the time you're just going to be approving those. Sometimes you're going to have to escalate it, but even that is going to be, you know, not anything too crazy. Uh, definitely something that is a lot easier than
than the, the craziness that you're seeing when you go online and you're looking at researchers and elite hackers and, uh, and things like that, right? And so the interview will also likely be a lot more difficult than the actual job as well. So the interviews can be quite tricky as well, uh, which is why I, I definitely spend a lot of time helping my students with that aspect. So naturally, you might be wondering, should you even bother with platforms like Hack the Box and all these certifications and stuff like that if, uh, if the job is really that easy? Well, I would say that in the beginning, you need to focus on the right things that are going to land you the job. So there's shortcomings that I'll get to in just a second with platforms like Hack the Box Academy and everything. But I would say overall, yes, you, you should you should bother with it because it's great for upskilling yourself, but don't purely rely on it and see it as like this golden ticket to landing a job. If you just try to do that, you're going to have a lot of very crucial gaps in your knowledge and crucial gaps in your higher ability. And if you do want to eventually reach the point where you work alongside a bunch of qualified people and everyone is actually super competent on your team, filling these knowledge gaps are going to be absolutely crucial for making that happen. So just, uh, you know, as a quick story that I promised in the beginning, as I moved through my career and I eventually landed my most recent nine to five job a few years ago at Dell, that was a senior role. There were 26 pen testers on the team. Everyone was senior level. There were no entry level people and everyone was super qualified. That was the best team by far that I worked on. And it was, it was a joy to work there. I got to be honest. It was really great beyond some of the, um, let's say management decisions that were made and some of the heavy handed tactics that were happening high up the chain. But my team itself, I absolutely loved working with those, with those folks. So that was great. Now, the thing is before that, in all the previous jobs, I had to work alongside many incompetent people. Uh, the vast majority were incompetent before that. It wasn't until I got to that senior level. And the only reason I was able to get to that senior level was I continuously kept upskilling myself by using these platforms and, you know, finding ways to patch the gaps that I had in my knowledge. So now how can you actually patch and fill these gaps up? Well, you'll definitely want to reach out to people that you know to offer some kind of cybersecurity service to them so you can put that on your resume because the biggest gap that you're going to have if you're only relying on certs and you know, like Hack the Box Academy and stuff is you're not going to have any actual experience to showcase on your resume. So you're going to want to go out of your way to, to make that happen. If you can't land a job right now, then you got to make a job. You got to make that experience. You got to will it into existence, right? And the other thing that you're really going to want to focus on is you need a very structured portfolio because you might be doing the right things, but you're just not maximizing your ability to showcase that, to, to present that, to show that you're actually doing this stuff and putting in this hard work, right? And so I would recommend to reach out to a cybersecurity professional, someone you might know in the field, get their feedback, you know, whether it's through cybersecurity reports or something else, projects, things like that think can really showcase that you actually have this skill set. The problem is you don't know what you don't know. So I would highly recommend to get the feedback of someone that's in the field in order to gain clarity on that so you are moving in the right direction. And also, you don't want just any projects on there. You want these projects to be very tailored towards the specific role that you're targeting because one of the most common mistakes is that most people's portfolios, they're all over the place. And the problem there is they're a good fit for everything, but a perfect fit for nothing. So basically, they just lose out to the people that are a perfect fit for what that company is looking for because, I mean, why wouldn't they, right? And now, all of this can be pretty overwhelming to sort out on your own, as, as you might be imagining after watching this video. So if you want a completely done-for-you solution that was specifically crafted to work alongside of all your favorite training platforms like Hack the Box Academy and various certs while also addressing all of their shortcomings, go down below and book a call.